This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you have any interest in making an awesome website, be sure to stick around for more. Today, we are going to attempt to bring as many features from Elden Ring to Minecraft as we possibly can. And if you're like me, and well, many, many other people, over the past month or so, you've been experiencing this incredible game. It features a massive detailed world filled with difficult but fun bosses to fight and amazing locations to discover. And you know, it's been one of the few video game releases in quite some time that actually lived up to the hype. And like I said, I'm going to attempt to bring as many of these features from Elden Ring into Minecraft as I possibly can. With mods, we're going to be adding new combat, locations, creatures, and much more. And honestly, I think I did a pretty good job with this. And I'm going to show you all of the mods you need to install so you can do this on your own, or you can simply install the mod pack I created, which I'll have linked in the description. So anyway, let's go ahead and check it out. Now, this pack is actually going to be using version 1.16.5, and generally I like to make my mod packs in the newest version of Minecraft available, but some core mods for this video simply weren't available for 1.18. Don't worry though, with the mods we're going to be installing, you'll hardly even notice. And hey, if these mods do update in the future, you'll just get the best of both worlds. Anyway, I've included a lot of mods this time around, so I decided to group them into categories which will be visible as chapters, and the first category of mods we will be working on is gameplay. And these are going to be the mods that most significantly change the combat. And the first mod we'll be installing in this section, and quite possibly the most important mod in this entire video, is Epic Fight. And this is because Epic Fight mod is going to completely change the combat in Minecraft. This is immediately necessary for this video, because on one hand, Elden Ring has very detailed combat, with many weapons possessing unique abilities, whereas Minecraft sticks to a, uh, very basic combat formula. But the Epic Fight mod will immediately change that. Right away you'll notice that with this mod installed, the combat is completely transformed in a way that actually resembles Elden Ring. This mod's inspiration for combat was Dark Souls, and Dark Souls and Elden Ring pretty much have the same combat, so you know, it works perfectly. And you can't just spam attack mobs until they die, instead you need to be a bit more calculated. And most importantly, Epic Fight raises the difficulty of combat. And Elden Ring, along with all the other Souls games, are known for their brutal difficulty, and in the quest to make Minecraft like Elden Ring, it just needs to be harder. Keep in mind, with this mod, you will need to switch to battle mode in order to use this combat, and this will allow you to still use tools for their other intended purposes, because in battle mode, pretty much every everything is a weapon. And there's a couple game settings you can change if you'd like. For example, I've set game rule do vanilla attack to false, and this is essentially going to force you into using the new combat. Next, I've installed better third person, and Elden Ring is a game that you literally just play completely in third person, so that's what we're going to stick with. And Minecraft's third person functionality is much more basic than Elden Ring's, you can't turn around and face the camera. The better third person mod, however, gives us the ability to walk in a full 360 while in third person. And this is a feature that can be found in Elden Ring and, well, pretty much every other third person game out there, and it just makes playing in third person feel much more natural. One small downside of this mod, however, is it has a specific incompatibility with Epic Fight. It kind of messes with the rolling functionality provided by Epic Fight, so it doesn't always go in the direction you really intend it to. And this isn't completely game breaking, but it can be a bit annoying, so if this is a deal breaker for you, then I'd recommend not using this mod. I've also included Shoulder Surfing Reloaded to help improve third person even more. With this mod installed, you can adjust the exact positioning of the third person camera so it sits exactly where you'd like it to, and it also has an optional crosshair in third person. After that, the next mod we'll be installing is InvMove, and InvMove allows you to simultaneously move around and use inventories. And this is another fundamental part of Elden Ring, which allows you to switch out weapons, armor, and everything else in the midst of battle. And on a related note, you could even go the extra mile and open your world to land, which will make it so if you pause, everything will keep moving in the background, because once again in Elden Ring, you really can't pause the game, so I figured you might as well have the same treatment here. And on a side note, to wrap up this section, I attempted to include the controllable mod along with these other mods, which allows you to play with a controller, because Elden Ring is really a controller first type of game. But sadly, as far as I tested, it just isn't compatible with Epic Fight's attacks, and instead just uses the vanilla attack, and it also gets really weird with the better third person mod. Who knows, maybe there's a way to make these mods compatible, but in my limited testing, they broke pretty quickly together, so I decided not to include it. Now on to the next section, we'll be focusing on the visuals, and the first mod you'll need to install is Opt to find, which will allow you to use the resource pack I've selected. And the resource pack I ended up going with is Conquest. Conquest has been easily one of the best medieval resource packs available for a really long time now, and fits the theme for this video quite well. It's got connected textures so blocks blend together seamlessly, and quite a few blocks even have multiple textures for more variety. And Conquest honestly has the ability to make even the most basic builds look good, so you know it's a good resource pack. And you can try running a shader with this as well, although I'm not even kidding, you're gonna be getting better performance 
it's in Elden Ring at this point, so I wouldn't particularly recommend it, but hey, if you get performance that you're happy with, then definitely go for it. And the last piece of this pretty short section is RPG HUD, and this mod brings the HUD more in line with what you see in Elden Ring, and also adds a compass to the top of your screen, which again, is a feature in Elden Ring. The compass is slightly broken with a better third person mod, as it seems to be tied to the direction your character is facing, but honestly it isn't too big of a deal. Also, in order for the mod to actually display in the way you see on my screen, you're gonna have to change some settings, and the mod's very customizable so you can really get it exactly how you'd like. The next section we'll be focusing on is boss fights, and boss fights are an integral part of Elden Ring, so naturally we're gonna want plenty of them in this pack. And the first mod we're gonna add to get some awesome boss fights in the game is Mousy's Mobs. Mousy's Mobs adds several new creatures to the game that are more than capable of slaughtering you, which really is perfect for an Elden Ring inspired pack. And they're some of the most well-made mobs you'll see from pretty much any mod available, so overall it definitely deserves to be included in this. Next, we'll be including the Mutant Beasts mod, and this mod adds some absolutely terrifying versions of vanilla mobs to your game. The creatures in this mod are on par with Mousy's Mobs, and once again, are quite difficult. And in addition to this, we'll be installing Mutant More, which is essentially an extension of Mutant Beasts, so now you get to deal with even more monstrosities, like the Mutant Blaze, which does this, or the Mutant Hoglin, which, well, good luck. We're also going to include the Ice and Fire mod. Among other things, this mod features hostile dragons, and dragons play a pretty huge role in Elden Ring, so this mod should probably be here. And just like the other mods so far, the creatures added in this mod are very difficult. And finally, to end this section, we're going to include Alex's mobs, which not only will add several boss-like creatures to the game, but also many other passive mobs as well. And you know, not every creature in Elden Ring is seeking to kill you, so I think it's fair to have at least a few passive creatures. Together, these mods are going to provide plenty of difficult enemies for you to battle. And just like the bosses in Elden Ring at most, if not all of them will drop unique items as well. And speaking of unique items, our next category we'll be working on is the loot. And the big mod we'll be installing in this section is the Epic Knights mod. And this mod adds over a dozen armor sets, a multitude of new weapons, and additional shields. And all of these items have a nice medieval style. Be aware, however, that upon installing, this mod won't be fully compatible with Epic Fight. Every weapon will just behave as if it's a sword. Don't worry though, there is an easy fix. Once you've ran Minecraft with the mod installed, a new config called Knightly Armor Epic Fight will be generated, and you simply just need to rename this to Epic Fight, and then replace the config called Epic Fight. And once you've done this, all the weapons should behave in a way that actually makes sense. And we're also going to be installing the Artifacts mod, which adds several dozen unique items to the game for you to discover. And these items have some pretty useful abilities, so they will certainly be worthwhile to find. And normally you can see yourself wearing these items, but Epic Fight causes it to hilariously break, so I personally have them hidden. Oh, and by the way, the mod also adds mimics to the game, which aren't actually an Elden Ring, but hey, I think we're okay adding a bit of Dark Souls as well. On to the next section, we're going to be focusing on some mods that touch on particular features in Elden Ring. And the first mod for this section is Hunger Strike. Now, in Elden Ring, you don't need to worry about eating in order to, you know, stay alive, but in Minecraft, you do. This mod, however, will change that. Kinda. By default, your food bar will sit at halfway full, which disables healing, which we want because in Elden Ring you don't heal passively. The only time your hunger bar will move is if you have the hunger effect, which will prevent you from sprinting, or if you have the regeneration effect, which will max it out. Eating food does still have a use though, it'll simply heal you. And this obviously isn't exactly how health works in Elden Ring, but you know it's a lot closer than default Minecraft. And you can also customize this mod and choose exactly how much food ends up healing you. Next, we're gonna want to add a map mod as you have access to a beautiful map in Elden Ring. and I actually have two options for this, which will really come down to preference, as either option has its pros and cons. And the first option is Antique Atlas, and this map is a little more vague and stylized, so you won't know exactly what lies ahead. Plus, you can also set custom markers on the map. One drawback, however, is you need to acquire the map in order to use it and carry it around with you. And the second choice is Zero's World Map. This map, on the other hand, you have access to right away, and it fills your entire screen. It is, however, very detailed, which could potentially be seen as a drawback, as the Elden Ring map is somewhat vague when it comes to what you will find. Really though, it isn't all that big of a deal, and either one should work just fine for you. We'll also be installing a campfire spawn and tweaks, which allows you to set a campfire as a spawn point. And this is pretty similar to the side of grace functionality in Elden Ring, only you're going to need to make your own campfires. And in addition to this, I've also included the healing campfire mod, so you can go back to your campfire to get your health back. Next, I've added the global game rules mod, which you can use to enable particular game rules for all the worlds you create. And we'll be using this specifically 
correctly to enable the keep inventory setting. In Elden Ring, when you die, you don't lose your equipment, so I figured that's an important feature to have. And technically, you don't have to have this mod installed, you could just manually set this game rule, but with this mod, the process will be made automatic for every world you create. I've also included mob sunscreen, as the sun just doesn't really seem to be bothering anyone all that much. Plus, I've installed simple unbreakable tools, as weapons and armor simply don't have durability in Elden Ring. And I've also thrown in the equipment compare mod, which as you would probably guess, allows you to easily compare your equipment. And finally, for the last mod in this section, we're going to install the tool belt mod, which will serve a somewhat similar function to the pouch in Elden Ring. With this mod installed, you can quickly access tools and weapons, and it'll also show them sheathed on your character. And honestly, I'm quite surprised this mod even works with Epic Fight. I honestly expected it to completely break because that mod changes the player model, but it works correctly like most of the time. Sometimes the weapons do float around a bit though. All right, now we're gonna focus on the world generation of this mod pack, and Elden Ring has one of the most incredible worlds I've ever seen in a video game, so without a custom-built world, we're probably just not gonna quite hit that level. Don't worry though, we're still gonna make this look absolutely amazing, and it'll be a ton of fun to explore. The first mod we'll install is Vanilla Vistas. This mod uses OTG, which only recently updated to 1.16, and back in 1.12 this was essentially my go-to mod, as it was required to use Biome Bundle, which is still to this day one of my favorite world generation mods of all time. And Vanilla Vistas provides some great world generation for the pack. It has a fairly natural appearance, yet you can still get dramatic scenery with crazy features. Next, in order to add some massive dungeons to the game, I've included When Dungeons Arise, and Elden Ring has its fair share of sprawling areas, so I figured this mod should certainly be included. The dungeons come in a pretty big variety and will certainly take quite some time to explore. And in case you didn't guess, these can get very difficult. I've also included Dungeon Crawl, which adds huge procedurally generated underground dungeons, and you can usually find their entrances on the surface, and once you go down, you're probably not gonna be coming out for a while. In addition to this, I've also added Valhelsia structures and dungeons enhanced, which combined add a ton of medium-sized points of interest to discover. And finally, I've included pretty much every single mod created by young Nick Young, as they all do a great job of either enhancing vanilla structures or adding awesome new ones. Specifically, I've included Young's better mine shafts, better dungeons, better strongholds, better caves, along with Young's bridges and Young's extras. And finally, the last section we'll be focusing on is ambience. The first mod here is music triggers. Now, Elden Ring has some awesome music, so it would make sense to have Elden Ring music in an Elden Ring themed mod pack. You can do exactly that with a music triggers mod. The only problem is you need to set it up, and I would actually actually personally handle this process, however, I'm pretty sure it would be pretty illegal for me to do this and include the music in the mod pack. So, for the sake of the video, I'll use the power of editing to include the music. And as an alternative, if you don't want to spend hours setting this up, you could always try the medieval music mod, but obviously you aren't getting the Elden Ring music, but it's something at least and it still sounds quite nice. And finally, the last mod we'll be including is Immersive FX. This mod is built off Dynamic Surroundings, which is an incredible mod on its own, and adds even more features to it. With this mod, you'll get biome ambience, improved footstep audio, reverb in caves, and much, much more. Both immersive FX and dynamic surroundings are incredible mods, and either one will make your game sound much more alive. But I ended up switching from dynamic surroundings to immersive FX, as all the new sound effects just fit perfectly in this mod pack. In fact, in the gameplay I'll be showing you in just a bit, I actually started with dynamic surroundings, then switched to immersive FX later on. And I'll be sure to let you know exactly when that change occurs. If anything, it'll be a good way to compare the two mods. So real quick, now that I've covered all the mods I've included, I'm going to quickly mention a few that I just sadly couldn't add. The first of these mods, which can't be included due to it being a fabric mod, is Bosses of Mass Destruction, which provides even more awesome boss fights. And they're very unique as well, so I really wish I could have included this mod. The second mod is Player EX, which allows you to level up your character, similar to what you do in Elden Ring. And this is a pretty important feature in Elden Ring, so I really wanted to include it, but all the mods I could find that provide this feature are once again made for fabric. And the third mod, and last I'll mention, which I desperately wanted to include, is Electroblob's Wizardry. And this is a Forge mod, but it hasn't been updated past 1.12 at this point, although it is still maintained. And to this day, this mod still may be the coolest magic mod I've ever seen in Minecraft, and it truly would have fit flawlessly in this mod pack. Alright, now that we've got all the mods installed, I'll show you some gameplay of the finished product. And remember, if you don't want to go through all the trouble of installing and configuring these mods for yourself, you can always download the mod pack I've created. And before I get into the gameplay, definitely check out the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can easily build yourself an amazing looking website. You'll have access to a multitude of base templates which can get you started very quickly, and there's templates for pretty much everything. And whether that's gaming, apparel, technology, or really anything else, there will likely 
likely be something that works for you. And once you've selected your template, you can customize your website exactly as you'd like it. So if you found the perfect template, but there's just something in particular you'd like to change, you can easily do that. And you can even use the editor to view exactly how your website appears on mobile devices. It's pretty much as simple as website building gets, and actually makes building a website a good time. So be sure to head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and if you're looking to make it permanent, visit squarespace.com slash Asian Half Squat to get 10% off your first purchase. And thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and anyway, let's go ahead and check out the gameplay.
So there you have it, and hopefully you do believe I did at least a pretty good job at recreating Elden Ring in Minecraft. I must say, I'm quite happy with the result, and I included as many features as I could, but I'm sure there's others I missed, so if there's any mods you think that should be added to this, definitely let me know. And anyway, be sure to leave your opinion in the comments, I'd love to know what you thought, and like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.